こんばんはパットくんですこんにちは Wherever it is that you're watching from My name is Pat, creator of All Day Like a Shark where I share my Japanese recipe videos once a week showing you how to cook Japanese food If you guys are here for the first time let me know in the comments I see Barbara, I see Mariana I see Alice, good to see you guys This is my sumo outfit I hope the、uh, audio is a little bit better today. I realized that I was mic'd up the last two days and my mic was not feeding the audio, so the audio should be crystal clear today. So, are you guys ready? We're gonna be cooking in this suit today. Let me know if the、uh, audio is clear because I know there's a little bit of a fan. Can you guys hear me better with my mic out? That's probably better, right? I need to put my mic out. Is that better? Does that sound better? Less fan noise? Let me know in the comments. Today, what we're going to be doing is making skiaki. So, skiaki is one of my favorite comfort foods. It's super easy to make. And,、uh, Mariana, I know that you requested dashimaki, tamago, and I have to, I'll admit that I've never made that before. So, I need to do some research before I make a video and show you how to make it. So, hope you, hope you can、uh, wait patiently. And、uh, buena sera, or how do you say good morning in Italian, anyways? I don't know how to say good morning. I know buena sera is、uh, good evening, right? So, it's evening here, but I think it's early in the morning over where you are. I see、uh, Barbara, I think I already said hello. So,、um, yeah, let's get started. We have、uh, some boiling water here. We're going to put two cups or two packets of dashi in here. Get this started. And I have a little bit of a different angle today. Let me know if you guys like it.、Um, I have all of my vegetables here, which I guess you can't see because it's covered by the、uh, iPad. I have some enoki mushrooms, some mizuna, napa cabbage, some tofu,、uh, green onions, shiitake mushrooms, onions, shirataki noodles, as well as some beef. So I, I cooked some beef earlier today because I made gyudon, which is a、uh, beef bowl.、Um, And、uh, that's what I ate for lunch. So I had some leftover and I thought I would use it. So I wanted to show you yesterday. So remember, we made the dashi tamago, or not the dashi, the dashi soaked tomatoes? This is how it looks today. Let me give you a close up. And、uh, I had some of that for lunch. This is how it looks. Final dish. We'll just top, up, top it off with a, a little bit of、um, shiso. So、I have some shiso leaves here. I usually just roll it up and slice it very thinly. Have you guys made sukiyaki before? Let me know in the comments. All right, so there's our chopped shiso.、I'll、just put this on top. And then this is how it looks. Final dish. I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram or not, but I did post it earlier today. So, water is ready. We're going to drop in a couple dashi packs and、uh, get this going. So, there's one, two. The sauce ratio、uh, for skiaki that I use is、um, one to one to one. So, dashi to meeting to soy sauce, one to one to one. And The sauce that we're making, it's called warishita. That's like the, the, the base for sukiyaki,、um, as well as other types of、uh, dishes, like oyakodon, for example.、Um, and while that's cooking, I have my big、uh, pot pan here ready to go. It's my weeknight pan.、Um, usually, I guess, what I, whenever I go to my family's or my parents' place, we'll just do sukiyaki at the table. We have like an electric、uh, pan, and we put all of our ingredients, and then we can. Um, cook and sit at the same time. But、uh, for the sake of the video, we're just going to do it on the stove today. And I actually don't have one of those electric things. So,、um, yeah, we're going to have to、uh, work with that. And、uh, let's see, so that's all done.、Um, as soon as the dashi is ready, we can、uh, go ahead and combine the sauce and get everything started. So, if you're in a hurry, like what we have done in the previous days, you can microwave the onions, the mushrooms, And the to、uh, tofu, if you want.、Uh, the napa cabbage usually cooks pretty quickly. Same with the onions, so I wouldn't do that. But we'll microwave these, these few things so that we can、uh, start eating a little bit quicker than usual. So, 
First, we're going to start with a cup of soy sauce and uh, a cup of mirin, like I mentioned. That's, that's going to be our base once the dashi is ready. You can always add more sauce if you uh, run out, but I tend to uh, have a little bit left over, so I don't want too much leftovers. We're just going to put this into the pot, whatever vessel, cooking vessel that you're using. So here's the meeting. We're going to do one cup of meeting. You guys really can't hear the, uh, the fan noise from my little suit, my inflatable suit. If you can't hear it, then I will take it off. Looks like uh, Carla just joined. Good to have you. I'm in my uh, sumo suit costume. Have you guys ever gone to a sumo wrestling match? Or have you ever dressed in a sumo suit to go uh, bounce up against somebody? It's a lot of fun. All right, so here's a cup of uh, median. And let that go for a couple minutes. I'm gonna turn on the heat to get this started. And then um, I'm gonna drop in some mizuna as well as the napa cabbage. Sometimes I use shungiku, which is chrysanthemum greens, which I don't really like all that much. So um, I tend to use mostly, not, mostly uh, napa cabbage and uh, mizuna. And I'll throw in some of the green onions here. And then I'm going to get a plate so I can microwave the onions as well as the enoki mushrooms and the shiitake mushrooms and then the tofu. So if you guys have any tips or comments on making skiaki, let me know. We can all learn from each other. Carla says she loves my costume. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. I think this is the first live stream that you've made it to. Looks like uh, Nathan just joined. Good to have you, Nathan. Today what we're doing is making skiaki with uh, a little bit of beef. I'm just gonna pile all this on top of it, each other. Doesn't really matter because we're gonna cook it in the pot anyway. This is just to help it cook quicker, like we've been doing in the uh, past few days. So I'm gonna microwave that for about four minutes. And it looks like my dashi is almost done. So this is going, I already have my beef cooked. If I didn't have my beef cooked from earlier today, then what I would do is sear the meat first, and then I would add in my sauce. So it's very straightforward. Um, let me know if you guys have made skiaki or something similar before. One of my last trips to Japan, I was almost gonna spend $100 to eat at a sukiyaki place. It was like a high-end sukiyaki place. And what makes it so good is the beef. So they have like very fatty beef, like high quality meat. And uh, that was one of the uh, selling points, but I had already eaten a lot of meat and so we didn't go. Have you guys had any uh, expensive uh, sukiyaki before? I haven't. I usually have cheap sukiyaki that I make at home. So I, I don't know what high-end sukiyaki tastes like, but if you have, let me know. I would like to hear your stories. Um, so Alice mentioned the other day that uh, you can microwave your tofu to get the excess water out. If you didn't know, tofu has lots and lots of water in it, and that's why when you cut it, the water will start to drain out slowly. And usually you wanna put like a weight over it to press it, or um, you can microwave it, you can also boil it, um, or you can just let it passively go out um, like we're doing right now. But always, whenever you're working with tofu, highly recommend that you get out as much excess water as possible because that'll help to improve the end dish that you're making in terms of not diluting the sauce. So, key point there. Um, okay, so I think my dashi is just about done. I'm gonna go ahead and measure out about a cup, and then we'll add it to the pot with all the other vegetables. And this is gonna be a very quick uh, live demo today. Do you guys have any plans for the weekends? Let me know. I wanna know what you guys are up to. I will be going to the beach. It's, uh, it's uh, pretty warm. This, it's, this entire week it's been pretty warm in California. It's been about 80 degrees. Um, and let me just show you what this looks like. So if you can see, the pot is just starting to boil a little bit. You don't want to boil it, you just want to simmer it. So I'm going to turn down the heat a little bit. And as soon as the vegetables are, are done, we'll drop those in there. And then we can add in some of the, be the beef 
and um, the tofu and the shirataki noodles. So if you've never used shirataki noodles before, this is that's what these are. They come in a brown and a white color. I got the white ones for today. And oops, one thing that you want to be careful of if you've never used shirataki before is uh, you might be caught off guard with the smell. So it doesn't really smell too nice, in my opinion, out of the bag. It smells kind of like, like old fish. And so what I do um, is usually I'll pre-cook it, I'll boil it for a little bit. That'll help to also get out some of the excess water and then um, whatever seasoning that you're uh, using to season it, like for today we're doing the sukiyaki, the warishita, that'll get absorbed better into the noodles because the excess water has uh, been released. So Nathan is saying something came up, he's gonna wash later, no problem. Replay, replay will be available later. Vegetables are almost done. And uh, for uh, today's, today, since today's the last day of the five day challenge, I can't believe it's already been five days already. Can you guys? I don't know. And uh, hopefully you guys are inspired to make something with dashi. We did, I think this is the 10th dashi dish. So average, I think we did two dashi dishes per day. Um, so I hope you guys are inspired to uh, cook at home after this. And as you remember, I said that I was gonna hold a contest in the upcoming weeks to see uh, who would be inspired to take action by this. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys making some dishes with dashi and you'll win your uh, dashi packs that I mentioned before. Okay. So here's all the, uh, ooh, hot. Gotta be careful with the stove there. So here's the cooked mushrooms and the cooked onions. Just gonna drop these in here. And by the way, let me know what your favorite part of sukiyaki is if you've had it before. My favorite part is the onions. I love the onions. And I always like to slice them very thin so they get a lot of sauce absorbed. Um, so yeah, that's my favorite part. What's your guys' favorite part? Uh, so that's in there. Yes, Mariana, I can't believe you've been staying out so late, staying up so late either. You must be tired. Unless you're, you, do you usually stay up late? I tell you, I used to stay up late like when I was in college and uh, as I got older and started working, it's hard to stay up late. Cause I usually get up early in the morning. I, I get up around like six usually. So we're just adding some of the cabbage. Uh, we'll add in all the tofu. And then the dashi needs to go in as well. So I'm just trying to keep everything uh, separate. So I'm putting like the tofu in one spot, the mizuna in one spot, the mushrooms in one spot. We'll put the shirataki noodles in one spot as well as the beef. Um, I don't really like to mix everything up, but it's personal preference, I guess. So uh, welcome, Shauna. Good to see you here. Um, so if you guys, are you able to see, let me switch the uh, stove so you guys can get a better view of the pot. All right, you guys can see the pot better, right? A little bit. Um, so that's the mizuna, the onions, the napa cabbage, the shiitake mushrooms, the enoki mushrooms, as well as the uh, tofu blocks. And you always wanna add in a little bit of sugar because sukiyaki is a sweet and salty dish. Um, I don't like my things too sweet, so I don't put too much. Uh, usually when I'm doing three cups of liquid, I'll put in about a tablespoon of sugar, and that's what we'll do today. So since I already put stuff in there, I'm just gonna dissolve it in the dashi. I'm starting to get hot, so I'm gonna take this costume off in a moment. I hope you don't mind. I do have a couple other surprises for you today since it's our last day. So let me just mix the sugar into the hot dashi and then we'll take off my costume. Barbara says she can't see any comments. What do you mean you can't see any comments? I see comments. Mariana says that she's a night owl. She mostly works in the afternoon, so she still manages to get enough sleep. 
Carla says she's excited to try some of these dishes. All right, high five, virtual high five. High five. York Mart and getting your shopping list ready today. Awesome. I'm gonna be posting the booklet. If you headed, I posted a link earlier this week to get the uh, recipes that I've been sharing as part of this challenge. So you can download them individually or if you want the whole booklet, then you gotta sign up with your email. And um, this weekend, I will finalize that booklet. So it's almost like a cookbook, basically, with the 10 dashi recipes. And I'll send that over to you uh, this weekend so you guys can uh, try these recipes out yourself. And Alice says, Chef Rika on Dining with the Chef said last episode to rub the sugar into the shira shirataki noodles and then rinse to get out the smell. I have not heard of that before. That's interesting. But I think that would work similar to um, like when you uh, cook or when you have raw fish and you want to get the this fishy smell or the taste out of the fish. Usually you can rub it with a little bit of salt on both sides, uh, leave it for about 15 to 20 minutes, or alternatively, you can just use mirin. So mirin, you can marinate your raw fish in mirin for about 15 minutes, and that'll also get rid of your uh, smell. But usually after it's cooked, I don't, I don't really notice it. So um, like for the skiaki today, I wouldn't really worry about it too much because the, the, the broth is very strong in terms of flavor. Um, but yeah, sugar, rubbing it with sugar, that's pretty interesting. Never heard of that before. Um, okay, so let me take off my costume. And then let me show you, I had another surprise for you. I was gonna show you yesterday. I tried to get Emmy to help me, my girlfriend, to zip me up. But she left. Alright. It's hard to get out of this thing. Okay. Alright. So hopefully uh, the sound is a little bit clearer. So that was my little sumo costume for Halloween. And I wanted to show you these socks. I got some fun socks from, uh, I went to a, con a, a conference called Vid Summit. I don't know if you guys can see my socks. I'll show you the socks. Can you see the socks? They've got uh, a guy on them. Daryl Eves, he's a famous uh, YouTuber. They got those. Thought I would share that with you. They're pretty funny. I mean, who would put their, their face on some socks? I don't think I would do that. Um, Okay, so shirataki noodles. Let me go ahead and uh, cut them because they're very long. If you don't cut them, I usually just cut them a few times. Yeah, so Carla, Barbara is, Carla is saying to Barbara that maybe you can't see the comments because you need to try swiping to the left. So maybe give that a try. So I just cut the uh, shirataki noodles a little bit so that they're not super long. I'm just gonna put them on one side. The shirataki noodles are my second favorite ingredient after the onions. We'll just go ahead and get everything immersed. You can see the uh, onions have already softened a little bit. These mushrooms are just about done. We just need to get them soaked. Onions are also nice and dark. And then we'll just add in the dashi. And then we'll put in some of the meat. You can use really fatty meat if you want to treat yourself. But I usually, I go with lean meat to be a little bit on the healthier side. So that's, it's probably about a quarter pound-ish. And um, what else was I gonna do? That's pretty much it, so I'm just simmering it now. And usually you can eat it um, right away. As soon as the uh, alcohol smell's gone, I don't really smell it right now. And uh, you can put in a raw egg. I like to eat it with a raw egg every now and then. Or you can put in, um, after it's done cooking, you can finish it off with like a little bit of udon noodles. Udon noodles are the uh, thick, the white thick noodles. And <laughs> Carla says, so cool. Mariana says, so 
So cool. Have you guys heard of Daryl Eves? He's, he's a pretty big YouTuber. Um, you guys should check him out. I guess it might not be so interesting if you're not interested in trying to do videos on YouTube, but um, he helps people like me trying to grow their YouTube audience and their channel. So that's that. And um, the other thing, so I told you I had a surprise for you. I finally got my merch. So I have my own merch now. This is the uh, sample that I'm wearing. If you can see here, there's a little tofu block designed by me. And on the back is my shark. So All Day I Eat Like a Shark is my blog. And this is my first uh, shirt. So I had them on Amazon and as, as well as my own website. So if you're interested, you could go ahead and check out my designs. Let me know if, if you like them or buy one if you want. Um, I think Alice, you helped me pick some of the designs. So thank you for that. I did take a survey of my, my followers to see which kind of shirts I should design. And uh, I came out with like, I don't know, 10 or 20 designs. So they're all uh, up for sale now. So if you need new clothes or you want to give a gift to somebody, by all means, go ahead and check it out. Um, okay, so back to the sukiyaki. So you can see some of the uh, ingredients are not uh, fully submerged. So if that's the case, just mix it up a little bit and make sure that all of it is submerged in the sauce. And I'm going to add in a little bit more mizuna. If you can't find mizuna or you can't find napa cabbage, just use regular cabbage. Um, you could use spinach. Spinach should be pretty easy to find. I was pretty surprised the uh, the survey that I, the poll that I put into my, the group, the Daidokoro group, which you guys joined. Thank you for joining, by the way. A lot of people seem to have ingredient uh, challenges, like they can't find ingredients. So I guess I take it for granted, living in Orange County, Los Angeles area, is there's a lot of Asians here. And so there's a lot of Japanese markets too. And I don't really have difficulty finding ingredients, but that's not the case in uh, other parts of the world. So I'm just making space for more of the vegetables. Put in some more onions and then that's pretty much it. The sukiyaki is one of the uh, easiest and delic most delicious foods that you can make. So Mariana says, wow, my shirt is so neat. Thank you for the compliment, appreciate it. And uh, Carla says, please share a link. I will do that, thank you. Um, so yeah, since this is our last episode of the five day challenge, what I wanted to do is make a dessert. So we've been eating lots of savory foods, right? The past five days. And I wanted to do something very simple that I think everybody should be able to do on their own. Um, and that's coffee jelly. So if you didn't know, I am a coffee roaster. I've been roasting coffee uh, since 2012. So I'll almost, uh, what is that? 12, six years, seven years now, almost. And um, I enjoy coffee jelly. I enjoy espresso. I enjoy French press. I enjoy cold brew. And I especially love coffee jelly. Coffee jelly is a Japanese dessert. If you've ever been to Japan uh, supermarkets, they will sell these little cups next to the pudding. So pudding is another Japanese dessert. And uh, usually it'll be like a very small cup and it'll come with a little bit of cream. And all you have to do is put some cream on and you have a very rich adult like dessert. If you like coffee, um, you have to try coffee jelly. So I don't know how many of you guys drink coffee. Let me know in the comments, um, but it's very easy to make. Um, I have my coffee maker back here ready to go. We're just going to make two cups and um, I think I already ground it. So the ratio, if you've never made coffee before, or you don't know, you're not too uh, familiar with making coffee, the ratio usually is about one tablespoon to five ounces of water is what I is what I use to keep it nice and strong. So I'm going to put that in here and then we'll let it brew. And then we're going to use gelatin to thicken it. So if you've never used gelatin, um, it's a good thickener you can make jello with it. And today we're going to make coffee jello, coffee, kohi zeri. Zeri is how you say it in Japanese. So. Ooh, Mariana says, coffee jelly, I love it, I love it. Alice says, love zeris, zeris, daisuki, daisuki means I love it. So coffee is brewing, and really all you need to make coffee jelly, um, packet of gelatin, and a couple tablespoons of sugar, 
and some cream. That's, that's it. It doesn't get easier than that. Or actually, it does get easier than that. You could just go buy it at the supermarket, but it doesn't, it doesn't taste as good when you make it at home. Okay, so I need to get a, uh, a Pyrex. So the key to working with gelatin is to not just dump it and then pour hot liquid on it because it's going to clump. Um, you always want to get it wet in a little bowl first and um, mix it up with some cool or room temperature water. Ooh, Mariana says she's an espresso lover. Are you? The best espresso that I had was in Italy, of course. Where else would I have the best espresso in the world? I, make, I have an espresso machine here, but it doesn't compare to anything that I've had in Italy. So let me just get a little container for the gelatin. So this is, I think this is roughly a tablespoon's worth. One packet, I don't know if it has the weight on here. Anyways, we're gonna use the whole thing. And then put about two tablespoons of water, just room temperature water. Just like that. And then I'm gonna use my immersion blender to mix everything up very quickly. And then we're gonna put everything into these little ramekins. You can use canning jars or bowls, whatever it is that you have. And uh, gelatin doesn't smell good, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever smelled gelatin. Yes, you can use Kanten instead of gelatin. I've never used Kanten for coffee jelly because I always have gelatin, but I'm pretty sure you could use it. I, don't, I need to uh, look up the conversion. Does anybody that's watching know if, what the uh, conversion is from gelatin to Kanten? If you do, please share it. Julian, California. Yes, they're, they're well known for their apples. So this is how the, uh, the gelatin looks. I'll show you close up. It's nice and thick. And uh, we'll just spoon it into this Pyrex right here. And then I guess you can't see the Pyrex, huh? I'll put it on top of the sugar. Actually, I'll, let me uh, put the sugar in here first. So we're gonna do two tablespoons. If you like it sweeter, you can do a little bit more. Sometimes I also uh, sweeten my whipped cream. Was that, was that four? I wasn't counting, I was talking. All right, we'll just put one more. Okay, that was half tablespoon. So I was gonna do two full tablespoons. And this is all nice and mixed up. I'm gonna grab a spatula and we'll scoop this in here. And then we'll pour, pour in all of the uh, coffee and then whisk it so that the uh, gelatin gets nice and dispersed evenly and then we'll chill it in the refrigerator to set. If you like coffee, this is, gotta try this. So Marianne is asking, have I been to Julian? No, I've never been there, but I've driven through there. I know that they're famous for their apples. Yes, apple pie, unforgettable experience. Okay, so that is ready. That's simmering. We're gonna get our whisk, and then we are just gonna whisk the gelatin, sugar, and coffee. Oops. And then um, let it set. So, let me just make some space here and push this away. I think you guys can see, right? Yeah. Okay. Just gonna get this off here. Okay, and then just try to stir it in. And we want about two cups worth. And then we'll just whisk it and then pour it into the ramekins or canning jars, bowls, whatever it is that you have. And as soon as it sets, it's ready to eat. Okay, that's pretty much it. How you make uh, coffee jelly at home. 
super simple and super delicious, especially if you use good coffee. That makes a big difference. So we'll just pour about a quarter or a half cup into each of these ramekins. You might not want to eat this at night so that uh, it doesn't keep you up. It also is very good with ice cream. If you've ever been to a uh, Japanese dessert cafe, you might have had this with ice cream. I didn't pour it evenly. Oh well. This one has a little bit less. All right, so there's my coffee jelly. Very easy. Have you guys ever made this before? I'll show you what it looks like. It just looks like coffee, except uh, maybe, so Carla's asking how long does it take to set? Uh, since it's pretty hot right now, I would say at least like, I don't know, five or six hours minimum, if you keep it in the fridge. So our sukiyaki is just about done. I'm gonna turn off the heat. Obviously you wanna keep cooking it if you're gonna keep adding vegetables. Um, if you need to add additional sauce, just do the sauce in the same ratio that we did before, one to one to one, dashi to mirin to shoyu or soy sauce. And um, that's about it. So, um, I really appreciate you guys showing up with the uh, five day challenge. I think Alice, you're here every day. Mariana, you're here every day. And uh, I don't know who else is in here. Is Barbara still there or not? But um, it was good to have you guys join me and participate. Um, we'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have any feedback on how to do it better, I think I might do a different type of challenge in the future. I don't know when. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little bit of a break. It was a lot of work on my part, but um, I had a lot of fun. And hopefully you guys learned something. Um, yeah, that's going to be... Uh, about all that I had planned. And if you don't remember, I did mention, I think it was a couple nights ago that I was gonna hold a contest. So if you wanna have your chance at winning one of those three dashi packs, um, just uh, make sure to try and recreate something. It doesn't have to be what I made. You can just use anything, make anything with dashi and uh, post it, I don't know, my Instagram. You can tag me on Instagram, put it on the Facebook page or the Facebook group. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll pick a few uh, lucky winners for dashi. And uh, I'll send it, I guess I can open it internationally, just to uh, three people, three lucky people. So Mariana, definitely enter. Carla, you should, you should definitely enter as well. And uh, Alice, I hope you enter as well. And uh, whoever that fourth person is, sorry, I don't know who it is because uh, I only see the last few comments, but uh, whoever you are, I hope you enter too. And uh, good luck to everybody. I hope you, have, you guys have a great weekend. And um, I will see you in my next video. So, skare sama and I'll see you uh I'll see you later. Mata ne.